Extra Time is sponsored by Globen. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for sending your treats in. Craig Burley, Ali Moreno and Luis Garcia here. Has the line gone down from Doha or something? Yeah, well, Shaka needs a rest, I told you. He needs his beauty sleep. <laughs> He's something. like Cinderella, he's going to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> Beauty sleep is the right terminology, but... <laughs> well, he looks good on it, let's just say it's that. It's interesting, we never really dis I don't know if we discussed it in the show, but... Louise, what do you think will happen with... Unless it has already, have I missed something? Luis Enrique, do you think he'll make a decision, or do you think the Spanish FA will make a decision? Uh, I think the, the, the contract expired uh, after the World Cup and uh, they asked him if uh, he was uh, going to continue. He said there was no moment right now to make any decisions. I think that the Spanish uh, Federation is going to uh, ask him to stay, at least for the Europe. We'll see what he decides, what the, 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 the crew decide. But uh, definitely, I think that they want to give him the chance to continue with this group of young talents and see if they can manage to, to get a good result for the Euros. But um, I think it's coming on in the next couple of weeks. More importantly, is he going to continue to stream and Twitch and all these things that he was doing during the World Cup? Is Maybe. That... I hope so. I actually enjoyed oh. quite a lot of his content. More importantly, is he going to get a psychological penalty coaching? <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the next cycle, for the next cycle. Yeah, he's got one. He sits on the bench like that. But him, he sits on the bench and... Yeah, listen. remember England, Colombia? You know, these things pay off great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think it could be a World Cup win. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're not. You're going to regret that if England go to a penalty shootout and lose. I'll regret any time England goes to a penalty shootout. I've lived long enough to see too many, <laughs> you said too that, many bad ones. But you said they were prepared mentally. <laughs> There's a big report of how they prepared for that, <laughs> and they believe that's why they finally no, won a penalty you, shootout. How do you prepare mentally for pen? How do you prepare? Do you set? Is it the mentally prepared players go and sit in a separate room and like just? <laughs> <laughs> stare at each other or what, stare at a wall? It's like, it's, it's it? a tiny, fine margin. Or do you walk around the hotel complex perimeter of the, <laughs> of the, of the lush gardens talking to yourself? <laughs> I can't score a penalty, I can't score, I can't. I will, I score, I score, I score, I score. Is this how you did it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I should have already known as an English person never to bring up the P word, and I won't be doing so again. Anyway, Luis, since the first game against Costa Rica, Spain's performance has declined. What areas do they need to address to avoid this disaster next World Cup? Well, I guess we all know that we need to continue working on players after who can make the difference, players who can score goals. We don't have that many players, Morata has scored three goals and just playing some minutes, but we need to the players like this who can get involved into the balls, who can be players. I think that Daniel Mostal is the players who we need, that they can be bold and fearless when they are near the box. They can try their luck. We've seen Daniel Mo try quite often uh, shooting to, to target. That's something that the rest of the players didn't do much, and that helps sometimes to open up the defenders and create some spaces. And uh, I think that that's a little bit. It's about trying to be more aggressive in front and near the box because Tiki Taka, we have it. Talent, we have it. I think in defense, we've been quite good because we haven't conceded many goals. So it's all about to try and and, fight and get the, the end product. And we've got another question for you, actually, Luis. Mm -hmm. Can a goalie who plays in the same league as the team they're going up against give them an edge over their opponent in penalties, like we saw today with Bono against Spain. He's obviously been playing there for a decade now. Do you think that gave him any edge in that penalty shootout? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, Kay. I was watching the game with uh, my son. He was complaining about it, but he knows them, he knows them. And that's totally true. When you have a, a goalkeeper who uh, you've been in front, even some uh, he played with some of them, so you know in the regular basis where are the, the best spots, where are the, they get nervous to, to, to shoot too, because you've been talking, you've been in the same dressing room. So I think that that didn't uh, help uh, in Spain in the, in the beginning. And well, Bono, I think that got advantage. You could see that he was smiling, he was confident, and I think that he was putting more nerves on the, on the Spanish players. Ale. Fernando Santos is asking you to call him and apologize properly. You were so wrong about him. And I said it on the show. Yes, I was wrong about Fernando Santos. I did not think, given the history of decisions of Fernando Santos in the past, that this is the decision that he would make at this point of the competition. If he was going to sit or bench Ronaldo, I thought it would have happened before the World Cup, that coming into the World Cup, Ronaldo would have known that his role with the national team had changed to make it in the middle of the tournament, yeah, that takes something. And Fernando Santos 
obviously made the right choice. I didn't think he had it in him. Fernando Santos, I'm sorry. You got it right. Beautifully right. <laughs> Can this tournament get any better for Eric Ten Hag? <laughs> I mean, he sat, I don't know, I hope he's had him on a little holiday somewhere and he's on a Chateau Neuf de Pap sitting there and smoking a cigar. He probably doesn't do either of those things. It's sparkling water. <laughs> he's not only did he bench Ronaldo and, and won the fight, just before the World Cup started, the club managed to get rid of him. And now he's been dropped for the national team. Somewhere he's sitting there going, go on, my son, Fernando, go on, my son, I told you. You know what I mean? Where is Ronaldo again? Where did he, I mean, uh, Ted Hag. Ted Hag, where is he hanging out? Where did you say he was? He's on a vacation somewhere. Oh. I don't know. I know, but... <laughs> Chateau Neuf de Pas. I'll explain what that is to some of you. Large, a large cigar. <laughs> <laughs> big vino, big one about that size. Might even have a straw in it. Because <laughs> things are going so good for him with Ronaldo. Hey, it ain't over yet, it ain't over yet. It's not just me, it's him. See, it's not just me who has problems. <laughs> well, well it, it links us Shatter to the next the one. Pop, look it up. We'll look it. <laughs> not your, it's not your lumbrisco. And we won't see any pictures of Stevie and his speedos there, hopefully. Oh. Trust me, trust me, oh. Stevie. Oh, no. Stevie has never sampled a Chateau Neuf de Pop <laughs> in his puff. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely sampled the wine in the cigar, I'm sure. Anyway, Craig, what do you think was I'm going... Not enough to pop his wine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lover, OK? You got it. <laughs> You're... <laughs> I'm a Pinot Noir drinking myself. <laughs> Pinot Noir. Well, Pinot Noir's all right, but I shot to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh! You can take uh, the person out of tea sides. Uh, you you're, tea sides. you're a lover, OK? <laughs> we know what you are doing when you go to the pub. Hey, get me a pint of lager. I'll have a diesel, please. Uh, and you weren't making fun Listen, of Stevie I'm, and his speedo. I'm working with Lambrusco drinkers here. <laughs> Leave them out. Pinot Noir or Chardonnay, and that's that for me. I heard they look the pub. Barolo? Barolo? <laughs> <laughs> Barolo. Was well, not a hint when he said shit. Obviously, yeah. Luis is so shocked, and I did forget to say Rioja there as well, Luis. Oh, I am oh. sorry, and I'm sorry for offending Please. any cultured types like yourself and Craig Burley. Oh. <laughs> oh. Didn't you see when he said Chateauneuf? She'll be in the she'll be in the liquor store <laughs> in Connecticut somewhere the night, going, "Go into this bloody Chateauneuf." <laughs> I've heard the bar. The guy comes out with it and be like. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> I don't have too many drinks these days with two kids, let me tell oh, you. Oh, here we go. Here. All right. I did have a few with Frank LeBoff and Dan Thomas the other night, oh, though. Yeah, ask Frankie about it. <laughs> it's French. Frank would be disgusted with my lack of knowledge on yeah, that I'm one. I'm home, you know, Frank. He has. He has he gone home. himself back in Paris. <laughs> Craig, what do you think was going through Ronaldo's mind when Ramos scored his hat-trick? Pride or anger? Well, look, think about it another way. He's one step closer to doing... He's, he's still got this messy thing. I mean, there's still, I would imagine, rivalry. Messi's still in the hunt to win a World Cup. Neither of them, neither of them have. Two of the greatest players of the generation by a stretch. Neither of them have won a World Cup. Didn't look like either of them were going to have a chance, let's be fair, when Portugal, even though they got a good squad, nobody saw that performance coming. Nobody saw Argentina being where they are after match day one. Whether it's him or somebody else, they could possibly go and give himself a chance. So he, he has to feel good about that. But he has, I don't know about the playing side, he's got to be gutted. But the fact that he could win a World Cup, even if he's not playing, I don't know. Conflicted. Conflicted. That's what I, Conflicted. That's what I think Ronaldo is. Conflicted that he wants to be out there. Everything in his body tells him that he has to be out there in order for Portugal to win. And the best version of Portugal is out there without him. That is difficult to take for a player of the stature and the talent over the course of his career and the productivity of Cristiano Ronaldo. If they win the World yeah, Cup, and that is a big F, because yeah. it's not easy to replicate what they did today and, and they won't face a side maybe like Switzerland. But if they were to win a World Cup and he gets 15 minutes off the bench, he still won the World Cup. Yeah. That's Even if he didn't get a minute. Of think the about the Euros from 2016. He played a little part of the final when he had to come off injured, mm -hmm. but he was on the side pushing yeah. the team forward. But I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, Luis Garcia, mm. a long time ago, did have Portugal as one of his favourites for the tournament, I yeah. do have to say. Really? 
Yes, he did. I remember, Luis Garcia, you saying Portugal can go all the way and win it, and you're probably still feeling that way if you were feeling that way before it. I think that they, they know how to compete. I think that they, all the players, they know how to compete. When these moments arrive, you can see that uh, they hand in there when they are struggling. They know how to hold uh, results and they got talent. We all know that there, there is a, a new transition of play. There is a new generation of players with a lot of talent and more coming because Portugal has been always uh, a, 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 an academy of young talents for the whole Europe. So. I knew that they will compete. I wasn't expecting a, a result like this one in quarterfinal and in, in, in last 16. I wasn't expecting them performing like this, but I was expecting uh, Cristiano Ronaldo on the bench. So yeah, few few things over there. And I will say that Cristiano Ronaldo at the moment for me is frustrated, very frustrated because he knows that he can add something into the game, but he has to realize that he cannot give what these young talents are given. And that, they, that must be so frustrating for him knowing that this Portugal is going to continue and he cannot jump in there with them. All right, since Don isn't here, can Luis give us the percentage chance Ronaldo starts the next game? Zero. Z zero. Zero percent. <laughs> I think so. I've gone on the record with zero. I'll double down on zero. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> you know, we might send on a message and tell him that's a hundred percent chance that he's going to start. Just, Just to clarify, clarify for Don. I miss Don. I think Don's coming on Thursday, right? Oh, yeah. Is he? He's coming over here. Is he actually going to be here? Oh, he's going to be on the show, not here. Because oh, oh. if he came over, he could have brought some Chateau Neuf du Pape. Who? It's a lovely. I mean, apparently, it's a lovely cigar. <laughs> I didn't think it was a cigar. I thought it was a cigar. I thought it was like some villa or something. So when you said he hasn't been near it, I thought. Hold on, You thought Chateau Neuf de Pape was a villa? You said Chateau, so I was like, okay, you know, could be a villa somewhere. My Spanish and my Italian's way better than my French, let me tell you. Well, I wasn't talking French, I was talking English. I thought I was anyway. It was the Chateau <laughs> No. I don't think... I think it was the hand signal. <laughs> I mean, that's universal, isn't it? <laughs> we definitely don't think Don drinks it anyway, so... Okay. Alain Craig, with the World Cup expanding, will you be excited about Venezuela and Scotland qualifying, or will you think they don't really deserve it? I saw some in the, one of the Scottish papers that was on, uh, clipped on Twitter. Uh, don't buy the papers these days. I don't think anybody does. Sat at home, and it was something along that lines about going to the. Is it the next one? It's forty yeah. in America, here in the US, and how that's just a huge opportunity now for teams like Scotland, Venezuela, and others uh, to go. I, I personally don't agree with it, even if it's the country that I played for, because I think World Cups are for elite teams. You have to earn your way. It's not like. We already have a parachute in, in Europe through the Nations League. It's easier, easier than ever to get to certainly the Euros, major tournaments, because of the Nations League. It's never been easier. And now we have the World Cup where it's like all inclusive. Where do, where do we stop? I, I don't like the 48 World Cup. I, 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 and I have said time and time again that, yeah, this is an exclusive tournament, not inclusive. Uh, you earn your way. You qualify to be part of this very exclusive club. Now, if Venezuela make it, I'll be the first one with a Venezuelan national team jersey on. Vamos, Venezuela! <laughs> well, they deserve it, though. I do you think I care? Do you think I care? If that means that Venezuela makes it to the World Cup, guess what? We've never made it, so we'll take any, any chance that we can possibly get. But do I like the 4018 World Cup? No. And I, but I don't think South America is getting that much help when it comes to the 4018 World Cup anyways. It may be one more spot or maybe one and a half. That means that we still got to beat a bunch of good teams in order to get to that spot. So it's not, it's not a giveaway for Venezuela in any, by any means. Think about the other side of the coin. That might be, I, I don't know what the European section side of it is, but if you, you got a 4018 World Cup and you don't get there, <laughs> Home good. Okay, 64? 100? Oh, yeah, so. No. All right, for the, for the guys in K, for Christmas, if you could have any signed jersey, past or present, which one do you choose? Any what, sorry? Any signed jersey. 
Louise, do you have any thoughts on that? Any signed jersey? I uh, will go for Maradona one. I never had the chance of having a shared sign. I got one uh, jersey that I bought a long time ago, and I thought that I would meet him. I met him once, but he was like in and out, and I wouldn't have the chance. So, yeah, I would love to have a, a sign shared by Maradona. I'm going to go with the uh, Ronaldo Phenomeno, who was my favorite player really growing up and, and and I think the best player that I've ever played against and that's including Messi and Neymar and, and a few others uh, he was everything that I wanted to be as a striker and was nowhere near uh, so and, and it's realistic I played against Ronaldo uh, didn't think of getting his signature back then I thought that the, probably not the right time to be doing that after a World Cup qualifier but yeah, Brazilian Ronaldo, phenomenal. The original, the OG Ronaldo, that's the guy that I would want. You could. Yeah, I could have had his as well. I've had chased him down the tunnel in the Stade de France at the World Cup. Yep. What's the Stade de France? Is it a special <laughs> red wine? It's a, it's yeah. It's Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> so I, cha I chased him. What happened is we played, we played Brazil at the Chateau Neuf de Pape, <laughs> and then I went for a glass See, of Stade de France. See, it would work. France. It's like Italian <laughs> last names. They work with any curry name. A few of the boys name. did chase him down the tunnel. Oh, that, that's a lie. They didn't. They went into the Brazilian dressing room. Mm. That's the Dorban knock, by the way, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> and uh, they went in, and I, th I don't know if anybody actually got... I, I didn't bother getting anybody, so to be honest. We'd lost the game, and I'm not really in one for keeping memorabilia. But I think a few of the boys went down, and I'm not sure I'd be telling a lie if I said, I presume that's the one that they went for, although there was quite a list. Mm. Rivaldo, Cafu, Roberto Carlos, Dunga, Tafarel. But he was the one. Bebeto. Bebeto. Yeah. I remember a manager telling us before the game, Bebeto, we knew Bebeto anyway, but I remember Craig Brown saying, everybody's talking about Be everybody's talking about Bebeto. And let me tell you about Bebeto. Six months ago, he was offered to the to Heart of Midlothian. And Jim Jeffries, the Heart of Midlothian manager, said, no, not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we all sat and laughed. We went, oh, we don't talk absolute nods. So he was using that as a motivational that, speech. Yeah, that was, a, that was some of the things he used to say. Bebeto was offered to Heart of Midlothian and Big Jim Jeffries said, nah, I don't fancy him. <laughs> Six months later, he's playing behind uh, Ronaldo in the World Cup. I mean, just nonsense. Brilliant. <laughs> See? What can you do? That doesn't happen at the Chateau Neuve de Pas. No, it's <laughs> I would go for one from Gaza from 1990. Gaza? Yeah, just for uh, a bit of 19, nostalgia. Oh, the Italian 90? Yeah, Italian 90. Maradona, Pele. Pele. Yeah, Pele Sports. would be amazing as well. Uh, all yeah. these players, yeah. Uh, Stuart Robson will be on with us tomorrow. Not here, there, but he'll be on. <laughs> so make sure you join us then. Is he a wine connoisseur like yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely better than me, I can tell you that. We're live every night during the World Cup. Make sure to join us tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.